God. Chapter 1. God's Existence and Attributes. Section 1. The Existence of God. 1. Through my life of constant prayer and meditation from an early age, I finally encountered God and received His absolute truth. This truth contained astounding content, which revealed the workings of the universe, of life and of history, as never seen before. If we apply this truth to society, we can resolve all social problems. If we apply it to the world, we can resolve all global problems. Furthermore, we can resolve deep religious problems and stalemates in philosophy. This is an unprecedented new world view, new cosmology, new view of life, new view of God's providence and new view of history. Divine Principle is an integrated thought system that embraces all religious doctrines and philosophical tenets as one whole, while preserving the unique characteristics of each. 2. The phrase God exists is not an empty one. It is not that we deduce the necessity of God's existence by understanding the subject-object partner relationship through the principle. It is that God existed before we came into existence, that He existed before we could think, and that He leads our senses and our whole beings. This awareness is more important than anything else. The basic point is that awareness precedes knowledge, not the other way around. If we are cold, we feel cold before we know we are cold. Likewise, since God exists, we should be able to feel His existence in our very cells. Achieving that awareness is what matters. The issue is how we achieve that awareness, the ability to experience these things. 3. The most serious issue in human life is to know whether or not God exists. If God really exists, the greatest of sinners is the one who denies his existence. For example, if a son denies his parents' existence when they are truly alive and well, would we call him a filial son or an unfilial son? We would call him an unfilial son. Then, what will happen to the person who denies God's existence, even though God exists? That person will come to ruin. Hence, there is no greater sin than the denial of God's existence. There are even those who say God is dead. There is no sin greater than the utterance of such words. 4. We should not perceive the existence of God only vaguely and conceptually. It is impossible to understand the existence of God through logic alone. This is because God's existence, while within the realm of logic, also reaches beyond logic. Can a religious belief in which we know God only through logic guide our lives? Can such a belief perfect us as substantial beings of eternal life? There are many problems with that idea. With only that foundation, how can we expect to stand before God, our true Lord? Our coming to God has been the hope of humankind and also God's providential objective throughout history.